The next exercise that we're going to do is similar to what I just showed you, but it's a little bit more geometric than just grabbing certain parameters. And it's something called creating elements by intersection. So I'm going to close that Dynamo definition. I'm going to close this Revit file, and I'm actually going to open another Revit file, create elements by intersection, which you'll be able to get from the website. And in this file, you can see that there's a roof, some columns, and there's a face. Now how this roof was created was by face. So what I did is I created a surface in Revit, not using Dynamo, but just created a surface in Revit, and then used the roof by face to create the roof. So there's a face there, and then there's also a roof, and then there's all these columns. There's also a grid in here. So if I go to level one, you can see that there's a grid, and all those columns are at the grid intersection points. So what I want to do is if I go back to the 3D view, what I want to do is create beams that follow this roof line. Now you could do this all in Revit and not use Dynamo for it, but it would be very painful to do that. But Dynamo makes it really easy. And what we're going to do is actually use those grids. We're going to turn those grids into planes. Those planes are going to intersect this surface of the roof. And then where those planes intersect the roof, it's going to generate a line on the roof face. And then we can take that line or that curve in Dynamo, and we can tell Revit where this curve exists, turn that into a family, turn that into a beam. And then we'll have beams that curve and follow this roof shape. And it makes it really simple. So let's go back into Dynamo, create a new definition. And the first thing we need to do is select those grid lines. So we're going to use select model elements, plural, because we're selecting multiple grids. And then we also need to select that face that's in there. So instead of model elements, there's a node called select face. And now with these two, we need to select the grids. So let's go back into Revit, slide this over. We need to go back to the level one floor plan. Make sure that only the grids are visible. So I'm going to click on the sunglasses here and say isolate category. And then we'll select that button. Do one window to select all of the grids. And then I've captured all of the grids now in Dynamo. And then while I'm at it here, I might as well just go ahead and select that face. So let's go to the 3D view and kind of turn it upside down a little bit here. And then click on select. And then we'll select that face. And now we've got both. So we've got the face and we've got the grids. Now what we can do is these grids I want to convert into a curve. And then that curve will extrude to become a plane. And there's a special node that grabs grids and turns them into a curve, and it's called grid curve. That feeds into there, and that produces curves, as you can see here. So the face that I selected is now showing up in Dynamo, and now those grids are showing up in Dynamo as lines from this node here. But now I want to extrude those curves up so that they intersect with that face that we're seeing here. And so I'm going to say curve extrude. And what I want is actually not that one. I want curve, and I want the one that says curve direction and distance, which is this one here. So curve goes into there. Direction is the z-axis, so vector z-axis. That plugs into direction. And then the distance, let's make it 20. I think that's tall enough. Yep, not quite. Let's make it 30. There we go. You just want to make sure that those planes go all the way through the roof. Because if they don't, you won't get a continuous intersection. So now they're high enough to go all the way through the roof. And so now they're intersecting that roof. By the way, when I do that, when they intersect, if I tilt it sort of upside down here, it creates lines at those intersections. You can't really see it, but there's a line there at that intersection. We need to intersect the geometry now. So we have these curves with the roof, and we're going to say geometry intersect all. Now our geometry in this case are the curves, and our entity is the face. So we plug the face in there. And now 
that we're intersecting that, you can see those lines appear on that face. And those lines are what we're going to now use to generate our beams. But the list that comes out of here, you can see are lists of individual curves. So we need to flatten this list. So now I will flatten the list. And then what I get out of here is just a list of curves, not a list of a list of curves. And then we can convert these curves that you can see are highlighted in blue there into beams by using a node called structural framing beam by curve right there. So the curve is this flattened list. It's asking for a level. So there's a node for that. So you just type level. It's a selection node. So we'll put the beams at level two. The level honestly doesn't really matter all that much. It could be any level. And then the framing type, we're looking for a family. So rather than selecting from the entire list of all the families in the project, you can actually select just from the structural families. It's this one, structural framing type. So these are the types of beams that are in the Revit file currently right now. So I'll select that one and then slide this over, plug that in, and then there's the beams. Now you can see that some of the beams, the ones going in this direction, are actually flipped sort of in the wrong direction. That's a very fixable thing. All you have to do is highlight those and then in Revit, change this one property right here to zero. I believe that has something to do with the normal of that curved face that causes those beams to flip. But now that I've flipped them down, if the face were to change or anything like that, those beams would stay in their position. So it's not that big of a deal. But now I have nice curved beams that perfectly hug that face and intersect the columns right where I need them to. It makes it a lot faster and easier to do using Dynamo than it would in native Revit.